fucking big fists. Oh, shit, what happened there? Damn it, what did I do? What am I doing? Oh, I don't know what I did there. That's a uh, recenter. Oh shit, I broke something. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the preacher plays. Today the preacher that is me is playing Pen and Teller. Frankly, unfair, unkind, unnecessary and underhanded, or something like that. I can't remember the full title. But it's basically just F you, 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 and you. Uh. I think I've broken my height somehow. I'm not, not sure what I did. Uh, I, I, I keep clicking and it keeps changing stuff, but I don't know how I've done it. Uh, this is some sort of prank game. Let's just try clicking the continue and see what happens. Okay, I'm really short now. Calibration! Okay, stand. Five seven feet away with the camera. Pull the start button to recenter. Yeah, hold both arms out, and then hold both triggers. Ah, ah, okay, right, okay, there we go, right. Press start to pause, ready to play, press start to pause, grab card menu to start game, grab thingy, align, uh, what? Align any time to reorient. Don't forget, hold start to reset at any time, okay. Mm, this is not good, my, uh... My hands are slightly to the left. A little bit weird. Okay, never mind, we'll try and start, so... What do I do here? Grab what? Grab... Diggy from main menu. Nope. Press start to pause. Ah! Okay, press and hold T button to select. Okay. Alright, okay, so you gotta press pause first to start the game. A bit different. Oh, I'm in the audience. This looks quite nice. <laughs> Thanks very much to Gearbox Software. Good reminder for the code for the game. Whoa. Uh, I. Whatever. Like, what? Why can't I click it? Yeah. What the hell? Why did it only show up for like a split second? What the hell? I'm trying to click it. Hang on, why is it? Showed up for a second there. What the hell? If I click decline. Fine, I'll decline it then. By adjusting the terms of using conditions dictated by the EULA, you cannot continue and you will have to quit. Now, oh, continue. Well, what? Is this a prank? Am I getting pranked right now for this? Uh, whatever. This is weird, this is weird. It, uh, it's either pranking me already. Oh my god, seriously? This is either pranking me already, or it's just broken. Because I can't... I can't accept. I can decline, easy enough. Accept, damn it, jeez! Why won't you let me do it? Do I need to attack it from a different angle? Try and do it quick. No. Maybe if I point this hand at it so I can quickly swap. So we'll click. Ah. Gotcha! <laughs> wow. Hello. 
My name is Penn Gillette, that, and this is my partner. That was unnecessary, Penn, just to get into your you damn game. You are now in possession of a virtual reality game that is not a game. This Great. is a virtual toolbox filled with frankly unfair, unkind, unnecessary, and underhanded ways Actually looks a bit to 3D. humiliate and baffle your friends. F you, 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 and you. Virtually nothing in our virtual world is what it seems. The games are rigged, so you always win. The simulations end in embarrassment and tragedy for the player, so you mm -hmm. can laugh while your friend screams. We give you cruel magic tricks disguised as cutting-edge science and pranks that leave your victims with actual, not virtual, egg on their faces. Because while our world exists only as a simulation, with you added, the outcome for your loved ones will be real. I'm playing on my own. If you're the kind of gamer who always skips the instructional parts because they're always stupid and you're way too clever to need them, you've got to think again with P-N-T-F-U-U-U -U -U and you. There's particular stuff you need to know that's specific to each bit. Let us teach you how to navigate the waters that we've so conscientiously filled with sharks. We are your virtual friends out to help you destroy your real friends. Mm -hmm. Now that we've christened you as a member of the PNT crew, what we'll the hell? take you hands to our backstage area to really get started. See that highlighted button on the screen? This button is your ticket to the backstage area we uh -huh. use to disguise all the tomfoolery. When you're ready, point one of your controllers at the button and press the trigger. We'll transport you backstage to continue it's a bit our dastardly conflict. Floaty. See you soon. All right, Kit. So it's not a game. Openly and admittedly, they say it's not a game. Uh huh. Oh my god. Welcome to the virtual. Centering's room. off. It's a creepily accurate replica of the backstage lounge where we hang out with our friends after our Vegas shows. You can't Here's see it, damn thing. Get your training. And here's your menu of bits to choose from. All handcrafted and organically rendered by artisans with no moral center. To allow you to plunge your friends into psycho-technological freefall. By the way, it's now time to let that friends thing go. They I like Penn and Teller. That will play like, I like Penn and Teller, but Think of them from is this an actual game? As like, chunk. is this going to be fun? This is not a game, but... Dive in. So what's the point of it? Enough of the mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Let's give you a taste of how you are going to practice a bit to pull off the swindle. Okay. Go ahead and select the highlighted button. Our bits fall into certain categories based off of how you want to bamboozle your chump. Go ahead and select the highlighted category to bring up a new series of bits. Okay. Presto changeo. Go ahead and select the highlighted bit. Okay. Bullet thing. Once you've chosen the bit, here is where you can review the tutorial. You must do this if you haven't performed the bit before. You need to understand how to perform it, how to act, and any handy-dandy everyday objects you might need to gather before you wreck an unsuspecting chump. Really? Go ahead, select the highlighted button, and we'll move this train along. So I've got to collect things to fool chumps, okay? Like in real life. The bullet catch has killed more magicians than any other trick. It's even killed a few carnies. For real, killed them. So we never tried it till we worked out a method that made it safer than knitting. But even knowing that, even knowing it was totally safe, looking down the barrel of a 357 Magnum Colt Python revolver, wicked scary. So you tell your chump he's going to get the thrill of standing in for teller while Penn shoots a bullet at his mouth. Being virtual, it's absolutely safe. The chump's job is to snap his virtual teeth together just in time to stop the virtual bullet before it blows his virtual brains out. Mm -hmm. Won't that be fun? And you'll see it all from the point of view of... Mm -hmm. Jury's out on that one, yeah. Consoles. Step one. Tell the chump to hand you one of their controllers. Take it from them. Walk across the room and hold it out in front of yourself. You will appear to be across the room, standing by me in the game. Step two, start with a test shot. Explain that when the ring around the bullet turns green, 
That's their signal to pull the trigger. You'll then fire three more bullets. Bang, bang, bang. Step three, after the third bullet, the gun will magically float in the air, making the chump believe you're still holding the gun and allowing you to secretly approach them. Meanwhile, in virtual space, they see you across the room holding a virtual shotgun. They think they know where you are, but now you're close enough to scare them to death. Really? And you're going to. When the countdown hits zero, the shotgun will fire, and you grab the chump just as the shotgun blast would hit. Bang! <laughs> For a second, virtual will get real, and they'll scream like they're the mm. first person to really. Not most be of the people I know that play with VR. A shotgun in VR. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Too so easy, right? you're just doing a jump scare. I've done this to a million people when they were playing like the mix, Rush of Blood or sell that sweet, uh, Farpoint sweet or Resident Evil 7. Chump steps in shit. Mm -hmm. so it, this puts you in the role of the chump so you can experience the bit from their perspective. Think of it like practice. Alright, okay. Chump's view. Okay, so far not very impressed. What the hell? This is virtual reality and anything is possible. Let's put you in a place you'd never want to be in real life. Let's put you inside Teller's mouth for your version of our version of the magic bullet. Maybe you've heard of it. The most dangerous act in show business. It's a uh -huh. classic of magic. In our version, it's Teller sweet. and I ostensibly pretend to fake catch totally real bullets in our for reals, no kidding teeth. We've done that absolutely real looking but complete. That emotion cap is good. In our Vegas show for decades. And, and Penn and Teller are always good at presenting stuff. How like his voice is really like good at making over. it interesting. We'll sit back on our virtual butts while you do the bullet catching. And we'll let you use Teller's team. You can have any friend you want do the shooting. Hand them on your controllers now. You'll experience everything in slow motion on our virtual Vegas stage until you get good enough for our real-time Vegas version. Watch mm -hmm. carefully. When the bullet is just the right distance from you, use your controller trigger to snap Teller's teeth safely around the bullet. And now it's in my left hand for some reason. Here we go. Ready? Well, it was in my right hand before. Aim. Fire! <laughs> Got it. Oh, kind of. Breaking my teeth here. Oh, shit. I missed that one. Oh, shit. I missed that one, too. <laughs> I'm wrecking his teeth. Oh, just a second too early. Looks like you might have missed one or two. But I did. We think you're ready to do something that nobody, That's not disgusting. even Penn and Teller, have ever tried. The bullet catch with a shotgun. You ready? You better focus. It'll take lightning reflexes to catch all these pellets. Catch this. Ah! Is that it? Is that, that's where someone's going to jump and grab you and scare you, I take it. Okay, got your training in your head? Got your real props hidden there in your entertainment center? <laughs> Ready to harvest you some chump? Then slap that VR hat on your former loved one's face. It looks all right. You, 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 and you. What's the options? Replay opening. Blah, 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 blah. Hello again, it's Angelette, my partner, Teller. Okay, Since so you can make a playlist of stuff. Oh, what? Oh, balls. Okay. So we've got virtual Rochambeau. Okay, so how does this work? Y'all know rock, paper, scissors, also called Rochambeau. Mm -hmm. Tell your chump it's even easier and fairer to play in VR. You'll believe that, and then 
thanks to our advanced programming, you're set up to win as much as you want. And when you're sick of winning, wasn't that supposed to happen to all of us? I guess it didn't happen. You can just walk away and leave them alone. The classic, hey, where'd everyone go? Gag. Here's how this bit works. Explain to the chump that recently there was a cheating scandal at the International Rock, Paper, Scissors Championship. It involved what's called hand watching. Players were watching their opponent's hand, determining what sign they were starting to throw, and milliseconds later, throwing the sign that would win. You can also explain that people have cheated in other ways, just throw anything you want. You know, the International Rock, Paper, Scissors Association had to figure out how to prevent cheating, and technology was the solution. Instead of hand gestures, we now use VR controllers. When the voice says three, two, one, go, you press two or more buttons for rock, no buttons for paper, and one button for scissors. The movements are so similar as to be indistinguishable. It's the fairest way to play because I can't get a glimpse of what you're gonna throw until you've thrown it. It's absolutely impossible to cheat. You see your choice animated on screen, and a computer tally keeps perfect score. Let's play a few games. Ready up? Now you play, you know, legitimately for a while. When you're ready to start winning streak, you quickly pull the controller trigger three times. Now the game will auto-play for you, starting with the next match. We've rigged the game so that the fraction of a second they think the button push is being processed the program sneaks you in with the winning move. It's cheating exactly the same way you told them the system would prevent. This is wow. the kind of scam that really pleases us. Enjoy it for a while, then leave. The game will keep playing for you. And the longer the play, this is such the more they lose. Childish prank. Now you're winning all the time and you're not even there. Eventually they'll get discouraged and finally they'll give up and take off the headset. They won't know what hit them. This is They'll be all alone. <laughs> Just a sad loser with no one to play with. Wow, th this is, I'm sorry, like, but this is far too much production value for something as simple as a stupid joke if someone takes a headset off and there's nobody there. They know you're laughing at them, but you're gone. Please use your absence wisely. Flirt with someone the chump loves. Or what? <laughs> crazy glue live bats with the windshield of their car. What? Come on. We've given you a few precious minutes to pull off the prank of a lifetime. We only ask you one thing in return. Document. Put it online. Okay, let's see what it's like. Jesus. I... <laughs> Welcome to Virtual Rochambeau. I gotta look this way now. The official Las Vegas Rock, Paper, Scissors Professional Rochambeau Association. It's far the too much production value for this thing. 20 odd quid this game is. All of Rips Prop, as we say for short. Just for a stupid a prank. It's so childish. Some play the game, oh, I've got the other hand. Some play the opponent, and some play theoretically or mathematically. When we moved this game onto a virtual playing field, we took away reading the eyes of your opponent. We also took away the possibility of cheating. Good trade-off. No more it's, sideways. It's well made. Papers ready and to pens are uh, really scissors. good at making it interesting. Know your strategy, but we Production know values are quite high. It looks nice. You know the rules. Rock beats scissors. But I just don't beats get paper. And paper beats rock. You'd pay in a, you, you know, know you can you can do these kind of pranks in any game. Throw, you don't need an entire game dedicated to pulling off a hurt. daft prank. You select by the number of buttons you push down at once. To select paper, don't hold down any buttons at all. Just flat out nothing. To select scissors, hold down one button. Snip, snip, snip. And to select rock, hold down two or more buttons. Make a fist. May the best controller win. All right, I'm ready. Okay, I guess you can only do it for the left hand, maybe. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I got scissors. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. 
ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh, two rocks. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ah, uh, got cut. Ready. Three, two, one, go. It's all well Ready. done, but it just seems so Three, daft. Two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Broke my scissors. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. I'm gonna try clicking three times. Ready. Three, two, one, go. 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 Oh no, I lost. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh no, I lost again. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. I don't have much commentary for this Three, game. <laughs> two, one, go. Like. What what am I supposed to Ready. say? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Oh, we've timed out. Was that the prank? That was the prank. What's this? What's your thing? It's called balls. Let's have a look at this one. Select the play option to experience the entire bit from start to finish. Alright, okay. GC, how's it going? Just playing a bit of Pen and Teller. Far too much production uh, value into this thing. I did a series of documentaries where traveled around the world seeing close up magic in all different cultures, street magic. Very and, well uh, uh, every animated. Culture, they had a version of the same trick. Uh, uh, the trick was pretty much the same, but the props changed. In, uh, in China, they had these uh, metal cups handed down generation to generation. In India, they had these hand carved wooden cups. Because we were representing the United States of America, we used plastic cups and we used aluminum foil balls, thus having the totally disposable, totally American cups and balls. The way it goes is like this. Take the ball, place it in your hand, vanish it, and it appears underneath the cup. It's got a nice budget, the but it's not even really a game. Place in our hand, it's just stupid childish pranks. Vanish it. The way it's done all the way around the world. This is one telling like, him the ball. It's not it fun. Hand, then shows it underneath the cup, yet it still appears underneath the cup. Now we're all set. Three balls on top to the center. Hey, ball, Max, how's it going? Two side balls, put them away. They still regroup beneath the center cup. Now, these uh, three balls, I come over here. This is uh, juggling. Giant ball beneath the center cup, one more beneath the side. And of course, for our finish, it's an American baseball. Now, after we had done the uh, American version of the cups and balls a few times, we wanted to kind of zoom in. And do a pen. I'd and rather be playing that, yes. <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> rules of magic. Now, the first rule of magic is you never do the same. In fact, I might not stream this for very long, so if you can come on sooner, then yeah. Second rule of magic <laughs> is you never tell an audience that would be how good. the trick is being done. 
It's going to tell you exactly how that trick is being this done. Is, the third rule of magic is... It's very well put together. You can see the animations are good, the models are good, the, the sound's been good. What is hidden Pen's delivery is excellent, as you'd and expect. the fourth rule of magic is unwritten. But, um, I believe any magician in the world... It's just, a, it's just making stupid pranks. That's all it is. Make, the like the first one's about shocking somebody by just grabbing them cups. like on the shoulders the pen and, teller and shaking version them. Of the cups and balls. To the first ball, put it in place in our hand. I already stuck it underneath the first cup. The second ball, simultaneously, is written beneath the cup. Put it in our hand and show it. To the third and final ball, put it in place in our hand. Pretend it's in the cup. Put it in place in the cup. Then secretly secrete it and reveal it. Now we're all set for second half. We cup so loaded three balls on top. Center ball, put it in the cup. Each of the side balls, really put them away. We don't need them anymore. We have three duplicates in each of the cup. These balls from over here, this is not juggling. It's called misdirection. We're looking over here. Tells you the final ball under. One more on either side. And, of course, for the finish, it's an American baseball. Uh-huh. Was that it? I guess that was it. I didn't even get to interact with that one. Just watched the... Magic trick. <laughs> um, let's have a look what else we've got. Uh, Cardini, we'll try that one. Uh, I don't really want to go too through many Ray more of these. <laughs> of Gearbox is the great nephew of the most famous card manipulator in the history of magic, Cardini. Cardini got great by practicing for decades. During World War I, he practiced in the snowy trenches wearing gloves. When he was wounded, he practiced in the hospital. By the time he was 30, he was able to do what looks like CGI, but live, on stage, and all with skill. But maybe the chump coming over to your house right now thinks that to be a magician, you don't need practice. All you need is a stupid headset and the ability to follow I don't even have much commentary for this Good. game. I'm just oh, listening. There he is now. You can oh, see for yourself. <laughs> see a card trick? No, 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 no. This one's in virtual reality, and I'll teach you how to do it. All you got to do is put on the headset like this, and then follow what the prompts say. I got the cards right here, and all I got to do is have you pick a card. Next, just cut off any number of cards you want. Next, do you have Rubbish. any idea how many cards <laughs> you cut off? Like, literally, yeah. the first one was we'll the a, trying to jump to, scare someone. Take a look at that. And the second one was now, you make them play Rochambeau, okay? and then the computer keeps Next. winning, now, and they keep trying to beat the computer. The computer here, and the idea was that you were supposed to, everybody was supposed to leave the room. Now, so when they took the headset the off, they were like, oh, my God, where did everybody go? Me. You picked. Like, literally. The seven of spades. That, that was the joke. Is that right? Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. This is all just lying. I just made him pick the seven of spades and then told him what card I made him just pick, which is just call this a card force. Here's how it works. I started with the seven of spades. At least he's trying to teach us some magic tricks here. The deck. I turned around, had him cut off some cards. When I turned back to face him, I asked him if he knew how many cards he cut off. Then it gave me time to slip my seven of spades from the bottom to the top. And that's all I do. Then I handed him that card, took the other cards back, and he thought he had a free choice. Then I did my little show with next, next, and riffling the deck and told him the card. It's a total blow. But now he's convinced that the VR equipment did all the work. Now <sighs> your pigeon is set. You put the hat on the chump and you hit the button to start the program. The headset will tell them to do for real what you were just pretending to do. He'll turn around. And every time he says next, just hit the button on your controller. So I cut him off. Then he shows me the next card. But he, he really gives it to me. There's no force because it doesn't matter what card he gives me. I'm just going to enter it in just like this. And it'll tell him what card I picked. I'm not speaking because I want you guys to actually see what it's like to experience it. That's why I'm not saying anything. The program it's difficult for me nothing. to comment on it anyway. He's doing nothing. Like but yeah, fool. I'm just standing here letting you guys sort of the the card, hear the what they're telling you to do. That's and it. you're correct. It is boring. Your other tricks have big punch lines. 
big chances for you to dance around and laugh. I'm literally just standing here watching this. With your triumph. <laughs> but this trick shows now you're better than that. Right, so let's see what it looks like then. I didn't get to the end of the video because I couldn't be bothered, but let's see what it actually looks like when we actually do this magical card trick. Turn around, let the chump cut the top of a deck. Okay, so I need a deck of cards. I don't actually have one. Uh, yeah, I might be able to get my mom and scare her or something, but you need props. You need to find props as well, so I need a, I need a deck of cards for this one. Give force card to chump and receive rest of the deck. Next. Hold the deck up to the headset. Next. Rifle. Wait, then guess the card. Press X on the wireless controller and give chump the headset. So, um, I've clicked X. Okay, there we go. Step one, set up. Turn back around and keep the deck behind your back. Uh, well, obviously I'm playing on my own, so I've got to pretend I've got some cards in my hands and I'll just go, Next! That wasn't voice activated, I had to press the trigger. Give your friend the top card of your half of the deck. Ask him to give you back the rest. Say it next. Put both halves of the deck together. Hold the deck up to your headset. Hold it still. Say it next. Oh no. Riffle through the cards until the headset analyzes all cards. Uh huh. So this is what the chump sees. This is what the idiot that's got the headset on sees. Which in this case is me. Your card. Is your card there? If you want to repeat the trick, press X. Otherwise, press... Circle. But what? Hang on. My card the what? Okay, we'll just press circle. Oh, that, that's it. Okay, that was it. Did you enjoy that, guys? Did you enjoy that? Uh, one more. I'm doing one more and then I'm out. I hate spiders, so let's do the spider one. I'm doing one more and then I'm gone because I'm bored out my teeth here. We know here. what you're thinking. Sure, this VR stuff is fun, but what good is it if I can't use it to traumatize somebody who suffers from arachnophobia? Well, we got some good news for you. <laughs> This will scare I'm surprised you guys are still here. Anyone. And the true tune in and tune straight back out. Forgive you. Right, I'm an arachnophobe, now, so this should scare me then. This is such fun to play, fun to watch, and brings the creepiest experience possible. Because I hate spiders. The virtual world into the real world. Do we deliver or what? The program is plenty horrifying on its own, but if you're willing to do some extra prep. You can increase the effect some extra preps so I need more props living night in real life if you're gonna do this on people Get a couple of plastic <laughs> spiders. I believe it put some blue dots or oh I need plastic spiders or loops of tape on the underside set them out of sight and you are ready to go this one is really bad this is too much so effort for taking like a stupid prank on somebody this one. how great is that Tell your chump that you've downloaded some software that psychiatrists are using to help people deal with phobias. In virtual reality, I can't tell them I'm downloading some software if we're playing this game because they know we're playing this game. That doesn't no work. Physical danger. They can practice controlling their fears, separating silly, unjustified phobias from real threats. It's bullshit psychiatry, but it's almost believable. In fact, there's probably really some... The delivery is great, as you'd expect. Penn and Teller, the delivery is great. It's interesting just listening to them. But you're not going to pay 20 quid for that. If they are not wearing long sleeves. So have them take off their, their outer shirt. They might save the shirts from tears of fear and rage. But they won't thank you for that. See? They deserve everything they get. They'll see spiders of various sizes dropping down from above. The chump will swing the controller to squash the animated spiders. Encourage them to look up and around to make sure they see all the spiders, especially the ones on the floor, which can be easy to miss. You want them moving around and turn it around and clear them out. As they do this, pick up your spiders and wait. At some point, Press the button, and they'll get an error message saying they've stepped out of the play area. 
say, oh, 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 you've gone out of bounds. Take one spider in each hand, grab them by the forearm near the wrist. As you say, let me get you back into position here, can I? Wow. Do you, do, you, do you see this, GC? Do you see the caliber of prank here? They won't feel them. They just feel you. It's like someone for a five-year-old. Guiding them into place. This is perfect misdirection and perfect justification for touching them. They won't even remember you touched them. Then go back to the keyboard and tell them to take one or two steps forward. And when they do, press the button again. Isn't it? Isn't it just? On, and it seemed to them like it came back on because they stepped back of the play area. Get him, Teller. Get that big one. Get that one over there. Get him. Get him. Get him. Make sure the chump kills the big spider. When the big spider dies, the ground spiders will stop coming. And a giant will descend oh my God. and charge at the chump. Then the game will end. Here, the chump takes the headset off. The explanations are so long as well. The controllers. When they go to hand them to you, they'll see the spiders on their wrists. Mission accomplished. Just try to <laughs> all, down the splash. All of the, you know what I mean? You see what I mean? All of this production you know, and for all, for what amounts to someone going, oh! Let's see what it looks like then. You know what I mean? Like... Virtual reality oh, is used primarily for entertainment, but preliminary psychological studies show that virtual reality may be useful in dealing with some phobias. By immersing the patient in his or her fears safely in VR, that safe zone can expand. Oh, these are newspapers. World. I thought they were clubs. The following is for healthcare professionals. For education purposes only, it should not be used on patients. It will demonstrate to you how simple and effective this new therapy can be. We hope you'll sign up for a free trial in your own practice. Let's imagine your This is far too much money has been spent on this game for so stupid daft bloody prank man. Fantasy environment where the patient can experience the fear while knowing there is no genuine danger. Please take the role of patient and try it for yourself. I am I'm scared of spiders. Dark forest. You're holding two rolled up newspapers. Use them to swat the computer generated spiders as they fall out of these trees. Go ahead, give it a try. Ooh, I don't like the look of them. Wow, return to play area already. I gotta admit, I don't like the look of them. Uh. Uh. Ah! That's my worst nightmare, that is. Get out of here, you little bitch. Oh my god. That was it. That was it. Seriously, that was it. So I'm supposed to take the headset off that point in panic and then see little spiders on my wrists and go, Oh my god. You love the concept of this? Dude is boring as shit. Like, seriously. That was it, GC. That was literally it. <laughs> like, I, do, I don't know if I want to do another one. Uh Okay, can I click on that one? Uh it would have to be for like people like my mom who've never played VR like ever. Like, seriously. In Desert Boss, no. you get a chance to see how thanks to virtual reality, you could do a job. It's crap you on your own. Do. A I don't even know if it'd be funny with endless flat desert. Many other people one, we go vertical with another it would have to be with somebody that was like a five-year-old child or like somebody old enough that doesn't know anything about computer games. If you have a fear of heights, well, it's just it's going to be really exciting. Uh, I can't be bothered to listen to explanations. The explanations are interesting, but they go on for a long, 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 long time. Uh, I've barely spoken throughout this entire video because I don't even know what to say about it. It's just dull.
but the, the production value is actually pretty damn good. The music, the voice acting, what the hell? It's actually pretty good. It's just... I don't know. I mean, look, I'm cleaning windows and... Am I gonna get like a jump scare or something? It did! It, I, it shut me up completely! <laughs> I had nothing to say. Like, what? what is there to say? What you see is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brian! Hey! This is great. Oh, what's happening? I gotta smack that. Oh, now I clean the next window. Is that, am I gonna get a jump scare? Now that would be good if you cleaned the window and there was like a really freaky face like right in front of you. That might actually scare somebody. Might even scare me. I know, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm a miserable bugger who, you know, everybody knows me for being a miserable git, and, uh, oh no, monkey head. Anything gonna happen? Nope. Look, production value is still pretty decent, to be fair. Harambe, oh no. Everybody weep for Harambe. Balloons. Headbutt it. Hang on, I've got to check there's nothing in real life. No, can't headbutt the glass. Is that the... oh, something spooky. Where's Harambe gone? And what am I meant to do now? Was that the jump scare in this one? I, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same. To be fair, in the headset, if something did jump out of the shadow and jump right in front of my face, it probably would make me jump. But it didn't. No. If, it, if something jumps out at me as I'm doing this, that is going to make me shit my pants. I will admit that right now. Because it is kind of creepy. There's some creepy music kind of going on. Is that it? Was, was that it? Are you kidding? Okay, I guess we'll go to the next floor. Wow! Resident Evil, eat your heart out! If you could see what I could see when I'm cleaning windows. Bit of George Formby there, if anybody. Oh no. Well, this is the one with the most atmosphere so far, actually, Danish. This is the one that actually has some potential to. Freak somebody out. Wow, is that it? Jesus Christ. Oh, look, there's a head. There's blood dripping from the ceiling. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, please don't tell me that's it. I think of the poor artists that had to go all the way, all the trouble of putting all of this together for like literally two seconds before I smash that button and go to the next bloody thing. Ah, diddy diddy. Boo! <laughs> Feels like, it sounds like someone's coming from behind me. Something's got to pop out and scare the shit out of me. <laughs> well, it, it just keeps going up and up and up. It never ends. Oh no, the little bunny got shredded. Oh no, what is that shite? 
It's setting a good atmosphere. Oh my god, the dog scared me more than anything. My, my dog. <laughs> What happened there? Oh. I realised somebody was uh, cutting that that was it. <laughs> By the time I realised somebody was cutting the things, it was falling. My dog scared me more than the game did. At least I had some kind of atmosphere. Yeah, my own dog. How long is this video? Oh my god. UB Houdini is about experiencing the real thrill of death defying escape without. No, that was my dog. Death. Unlike most of the bits we dream up. Uh, I can't be bothered to listen to you anymore. I'll just wing it. I'll escape. I'm as good as Houdini. Trust me. Good evening. We are Penn and Teller, and it is our pleasure to present to this you. This is far too much damn production quality. Called Houdini. Named after our back yeah, loads of atmosphere and then just which is dropped. Named after the escapologist Harry Houdini. I'm a dog, Coco. I call her Coco Pops. Pretend to do Houdini stunts is not a tribute. A real tribute would be to truly demonstrate how hard his stunts were by taking a random. So I'm I'm the guest on stage. No idea what they were doing and plop him or her into this claustrophobic box square, of square, nightmares. circle, triangle. That's where the person behind us comes in. Eyeballs, fingers. I don't know. Now as I speak, first binding the hands together. This is optional, but for the full experience, we recommend it. The straps I guess this is meant for claustrophobic people for in fear of drowning. Her hands fit, they're putting one of the straps around both They're called Rice Krispies, aren't they? Handcuffs work wonders here, if they're around. And if any of you don't have handcuffs around your home, consider them a wise investment to make your life more exciting. Can I put my head in the water? Oh, I can. Oh, we've actually got underwater sort of look. In a few moments, this huh? Find key in the water. Okay. The top with water. To escape, you must break open each lock by finding the correct key. Uh huh. There's an X here. Matching lock and turn the key to unlock it. Hold your breath and imagine you're drowning. Oh, you've got this. Oh. The mental. Yeah. Oh crap, I got like a clover. Oh, but it's not that clover. No, it's not that one. You guys enjoying this excitement here? I think you're supposed to pretend to hold your breath. Great job. Oh, that's a tough one. Look at them go. Come on, triangle. I can't see. They're gonna be a vegetable if you don't get them all quick. I'm trying, but I keep can't see. Grab the axe. Hurry, 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 tell her, hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> Uh -huh. well, folks, even if they make it out of this constricting human aquarium with just the slightest hit of brain scramble, I consider that a win for us. Well, way to go, That doesn't work anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Penn and Teller, and I am so thankful oh, God, we avoided it? having yet another accident on stage. <laughs> a big round of applause to Teller, my partner. I like that Danish. Yeah. Someone takes the prank to extreme bright idea. Oh, let's put a bucket on his head. Oh, fuck my headset. Shit. Willing participant for surviving the Screwed it up. Act we like to call Houdini. Uh, right that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end that stream right there man um, I will give props to the graphical guys the animation guys Cheers DT I'll catch you later dude I, I'm sorry I wasn't more exciting but it's very difficult to be excited about this because you know especially playing on your own it, it's not a game for anybody on your own and it's barely even a game see GT mate we'll have to play some uh, Co-op at some point, man. Schleg. Um. No worries, DC. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate everybody popping in to see me suffer with torturousness going through this because this was 
as you guys know, this is not my type of game. I, I want to go back onto Sirento, to be perfectly honest. I, I'll, I'll commend the artists, I'll commend the animation guys, because Penn Teller's animation was really good. I'll commend Penn and Teller for always being interesting, and the delivery of stuff is really cool. But I don't see... This, this is something that you'd prank your kids at a school party. Like a school party, like a, a birthday party maybe, for like... Like five to ten year olds or something. Shit or lit? Well, it's definitely not lit, mate. Uh, my usual... <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I like the sarcasm. My usual positivity. That's why I tune into his channel. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm quite happy to try anything and everything and Gearbox were more than kind enough to give me a code and I'm up for it to give it a try. But I have to admit, if you're not pranking like your nan, your mom, some school kids, or some people who've never ever tried VR or who have phobias of stuff and get scared very easily, I... I it's not going to get a lot of people, in my opinion. And you want to? Do you really want to spend twenty odd quid to sit through tutorials that tell you how to do the simplest of pranks? Like I said at the beginning of this video, the the kind of jump scares where you grab someone and go Ugh! just as something f funny is going to happen on the screen. I've done that in Farpoint. I've done that in Rush of Blood and Resident Evil Seven to people. I freaked them out by doing that, and I did that for free just as I was walking past the VR as one of my friends was playing it, and they were playing a really scary game, not something that's you know barely got any kind of atmosphere in terms of scaring people goals and the rest of the pranks is you know fairly childish or fair things I'd be interested to see if Danish does get his missus to try it and other people but uh, hey sparkle game of TV um, I'm just about finishing mate I'm just wrapping it up so I do apologize because uh, I'm gonna go shortly because I can't take any more of it I, I can't take any more of the game it's far too Far too much money has been spent and far too good production value has been put into a game like this when it could have been put into something far more entertaining and, you know, that money could have been put to better use because this is just a daft, stupid... Oh, I don't know how else to put it. It's just a daft, stupid little non-game game. It's not even really a game and you've got to want to pay 20 odd quid just to learn how to play a few daft little pranks and a couple of little magic tricks. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's uh, too much. Yeah, too much money and too much production value. When you see other games that are crying out for production value, that are good games, but they just they, they feel like indie titles because they don't have the production value. This this has quite good production value, but it's just a very poor excuse of a game. I can't really recommend it for anybody that thinks that they're going to start learning magic tricks or anything like that. In fact, something that just literally taught you how to do magic tricks in VR or how to juggle or uh, sword throw or something would have been far more entertaining than what we actually have here. You know, I mean, like Rochambeau and bloody catch a bullet in your teeth and the stupid spider thing which lasted 10 minutes. 10 minutes? 10 seconds. You know, the cup of ball trick which you didn't even interact with. You know, all this kind of stuff is just the stupid card thing, which is was a trick, which I taught you how to do it, but it shoehorned in the VR. The trick was actually more entertaining when he pulled it off for real, in real life, in the example, but the VR thing's just shoehorned in on that trick. It's, it's not good. Not good. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. That's my thoughts. Uh, if you joined in late, please feel free to rewind. Uh... Go back to the beginning and have a look and see what you thought from the very beginning because I just I stayed silent and I just watched the tutorial so you can watch back it, exactly how I saw it. I didn't interrupt it much. I didn't really speak much. I just let it go. Uh, but yeah, uh, not my cup of tea. I shall go and play something else now. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. I'll catch you later.